Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. My name is Althea Walters, and I am the host for the Focus and Fulfill podcast. Now, today, my special guest is Shelly Bosworth, right, from Shelly Bosworth Coaching, and she's a business mindset coach. And we're going to have a conversation today around limiting beliefs and imposter syndrome. You know, we all struggle with that. It doesn't matter who we are or where we are in our journey. You know, from time to time, that little monster pops up. And so we're going to have a conversation about that. Shelly, it's so good to have you on the, on the podcast today. Thank you so much, Happy. It was so good to be here. It really is. Um, yeah, thank you so much for having me. Great. So, Shelly, we just want to understand a little background about you, you know, your journey from even struggling with limiting beliefs and then coming to your coaching business. Tell us about that. I'm so interested to hear. <laughs> let, me give you the, let me give you the story. I'll give you the whistle stop. So my yeah. background is actually corporate. So I've only been, I say only, I don't think I can use the new girl tag for much longer, but I've been running my business for just over two years. Mm -hmm. uh, prior to that, I actually had a 25 year corporate career here in the UK. Um, I fairly standard upbringing, you know, work hard at school, do well in your exams, get out there and do it, yes. get a good job, nice benefits package, get yourself a nice house, nice car, you know, work till you're God knows how old and yes. then that's it really. Exactly. And that's what I did. Essentially, I, mean, I was very ambitious. I was very driven, went out into the corporate world and I climbed the ladder and I I was quite clear where I was going, to be honest. I had very high sights and, and off I went and I was doing very well. And mm -hmm. I don't mean that in any other way than I worked my butt off yeah. and, and I had got to a certain point and I was earning a good amount of money and to the outside world and, I, you know, friends, family, anybody, nice house, nice car, nice holidays, good money in the bank, working very hard, probably working too hard, not probably, definitely. Anyway, what happened? So what changed? Now... Yeah. I uh, met my husband at 38 years young. I was never going to get married. That was, I was, I was not getting married and I wasn't having children. Uh, <laughs> we don't have children, but we did get married. Right. So I met my husband, I was 38 and we decided to get married and everything changed and in a good, good way, but there is some, some sadness to the story. So basically what happened was we met and I turned 40 Mm -hmm. I had a health scare, quite a serious health scare, which I'm pleased to say was just a scare. And we came out the other side and it was a little bit of a wake up moment, though. You know, I'm not as yeah. invincible as I thought I was, yeah. but also, but, but actually the biggest triggers, so these, these were little triggers along the way, but the biggest triggers, I should say. So four days after our wedding, my husband's father was um, diagnosed with early onset Alzheimer's. Mm. He was 63 years of age and he deteriorated very quickly so the following three years were very much about caring supporting that side of my family oh, yeah. Yeah. And, and yeah and caring for my father-in-law who sadly passed away in June 2018 mm. so in January 2018 I announced that I wanted to train as a coach. I had been working with a coach and it had really got me exploring things. I'd certainly started asking questions of life watching my father-in-law's experience of Alzheimer's yeah. and all that he'd worked for and so I was working with a coach and I had discovered and we'll come to this shortly I've got a load of limiting beliefs who knew <laughs> and so I got really interested after, in this. after you after, were so invincible at all of these things I was so invincible so invincible and I've done so well at work but hey I've got all these limiting beliefs and oh that makes a lot more sense now right. and so I became very interested very quickly and actually I came out of that coaching experience learned huge amounts about me making some new decisions and deciding I wanted to to train as a coach and so in January 2018 I announced that I was going mm -hmm. to train as a coach while still working obviously and so that is what I did I started training as a coach I was still in my corporate role so I was working I was traveling the country as part of my role so I worked away quite a lot my father-in-law passed away I was like I'm determined I want to do this at this stage I didn't necessarily know or think I was going to leave my corporate business as quickly as I went on to do Right. Um, it was a kind of a longer term plan. So what I, I guess that whole I'm in, I'm I'm not invincible was getting me thinking. You know, do I want to work till I'm sixty? Do I want to work this hard till I'm sixty? Mm -hmm. Do I want to be doing this for the next fifteen years? 
Mm. Anyway, my father-in-law passed away. Sadly, um, and you couldn't write it, seven months later, my mother-in-law was diagnosed with terminal cancer and she oh. passed away three months later. So we, we said goodbye to my husband's parents mm -hmm. very swiftly in less than a year, both of them. Right. Yeah. And that really was the final, I guess, trigger, if you like. Um, for me personally, my husband went through his own journey in that. But for me, there was this real, I am 42, 43 now. Um, is this really what I want life to be? Life is so precious. Life is so short. Mm -hmm. And there's things I want to do and I want to live and I want to help others. And I'd had so many of my own awakenings, if you like, I wanted yeah. to share that with other women. So I'd qualified by this point as a coach. I had set out a three year plan to leave business at, to leave my corporate role. And I left six months later. So I left my corporate role at uh, December, 2019. I was ready for 2020 new yeah. year, new decade, <laughs> that, that new, B, that new business. I was yeah. like, I am all over this. <laughs> now I think we all know what happened in 2020. It exactly. didn't quite go according to plan for everybody. And that certainly wasn't in my plan for my first six months in business. But um, it, it happened to, to everybody. We've all got our story to tell of COVID. Um, yeah. And yes, yeah, so I started, I really went all in on my business in January 2020. Um, the world obviously locked down in the March and I built my business online. My husband was then made redundant in the summer of 2020. So we mm. went to, into a very difficult place where we'd both come out of our, our we corporate jobs or yeah two corporate jobs down to one yeah. new growing business um we've come out the other side of that we're you know and I'm so thankful to the coaching world and the things I've learned because that definitely helps in terms of resilience but all the way through that journey I've been learning about myself learning about kind of where my superpowers are I've become more and more obsessed <laughs> with understanding yeah. limiting beliefs imposter syndrome and the power of our minds and so my passion, my mission, if you like, is yeah. to help other women understand that. I'm very quite straight talking, I'm very practical. So I have quite a practical approach to my style. Um, but what I want to do, it took me, you know, I was 42 when I started learning this stuff. I wish that we didn't have to wait that long, but anyone that's out there that, that doesn't know this stuff, I'm on a mission just to help them realize okay. that you are not alone. I loved what you said. You said, I think everybody experiences this. I totally agree. Everybody's got limiting beliefs and everybody experiences imposter syndrome. We just don't always know about it. Exactly. Um, yeah. It, exactly. So, what, what an amazing story and an amazing journey. And you you obviously coming out on the other side. Definitely. You, know, you, you would have had to get over all of these homes, you know, and all of these obstacles of limiting belief to even get you to start your coaching business and get you to carry on. Tell me, why, what are the underlying reasons or what, what are some of the, the limiting beliefs that pops up, pops up for us from time to time? And the ones well, specifically that you had to get over. Okay. Oh God. Well, in terms of answering the ones that pop up for us, I mean, that's, that's a $64,000 question. How long is a piece of string? I could be here for days giving you those ones. If I talk about some that have come up for me, which are really common um, and interestingly, a really early limiting belief I, I, I noticed was even just the terminology entrepreneur. So yeah. I really struggled to put myself in the category of female entrepreneur. I was running a business. I was running, you know, I was doing this coaching thing, but actually mm -hmm. I realized that I had a belief or I had learned somewhere along the line or I taught myself, if you like, for me, an entrepreneur was, and here, here's the funny thing. So yeah. I, I would explain an entrepreneur as a rich, probably American, if I'm honest, mm -hmm. um, very, very attractive American mm -hmm. who's mm -hmm. already made their millions. They've come up with the crazy idea. They've come up with this incredible thing and they're already doing it. Because of course, when I was growing up, you know, the, the term entrepreneur was being used for the likes of those successful people. You know, Oprah right. was in that category, you know, Jeff Bezos, you know, Richard Branson, et cetera, et cetera. So what I didn't understand was this terminology being used for someone who was just starting out. And even mm -hmm. that was a massive shift for me, being able to recognize and call myself an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. And I didn't see myself as particularly creative. And I always thought, you know, in my world, entrepreneurs had a very creative flair about them. So that was one of the first things I had to really work through because I was now in this entrepreneur world, entrepreneurial mm -hmm. world, and I needed to be entrepreneurial for my business to succeed. Exactly. Um, so that was a big shift. And I think the other piece, I, I have a belief that everybody has some money mindset, money limiting beliefs, mm -hmm. because we've all got a money story. And so coming from a world where I had 
being paid for what I did and I'd worked very hard to earn the right mm-hmm. to be paid that to suddenly be in a place where I was asking people to pay me for my services again yeah. another big shift huge amounts of work had to be done on that mm-hmm. and I think the other piece really and when your your question was about everybody's and I think ultimately just learning to identify that so many of the things that were holding back so many of my confidence issues were in fact limiting beliefs beliefs that were holding me back beliefs I had about myself beliefs I had about other people beliefs I had about Mm -hmm. the world beliefs I had about how things are supposed to be rather than how they are or how I could make them be um and and I'm I'm two and a bit years down this line I'm I I do this for a living I talk about limiting beliefs all day every day I study still and I still find limiting beliefs all the time new ones pop up for me all the time so if I could say anything to the audience straight away just know you are not alone everybody has limiting beliefs and actually the key is learning to recognize them to be able to do something about them and I can talk about that in a bit more detail but but yeah you know too many people wander through life not even realizing they are the thing that is holding them back and it's because of a belief that they're holding about themselves exactly and those are great things you talked about you know your own view of what an a female entrepreneur is or an entrepreneur is um the whole money mindset that causes us to limit us to want to do yeah. something we maybe that we need a, this amount of money or we don't have the money to do it and just, just some other things that pop up I know from time to time one of the things that popped up for me was I don't have enough time in this world to do oh, oh there's a classic yeah that one and I told myself that and you also said about you know what we think about others or even things that we define about ourselves it limits yeah. us but one thing I found interesting was what one what you defined um, what an entrepreneur is or look like. And that's one of the things that we do. Our own definition of things limits us. Labels. Yeah. yeah. We label things and we label ourselves and we label, label other people. And we are creating these limiting beliefs that we don't realize that we are doing this thing to ourselves. Right. <laughs> I, I often use, I'll give you a brilliant, it's nothing to do with business. And this one came up actually relatively recently. This one's come up this year. So often when I'm working with my clients, like I'll find my own limiting beliefs in there because it will trigger something. Yeah. And I had this, it was, I suppose it was a little bit of a flashback. So as a child, I have three younger sisters and I can remember Christmas um, back in the day when I was younger at home with my family, uh, playing games on Christmas Eve, uh, Christmas evening, sorry, mm-hmm. and essentially being a bit frustrated that I wasn't winning. Okay. Mm. So my dad called me a bad loser. And now he probably gave me real context to that, explained that my behavior wasn't very nice, but what I remember is being called a bad loser. And, and also I have been labeled. And I've labelled myself as competitive over the years. Now, of course, what we do when we have these labels is we build upon them. If we yeah. want to find the evidence for it, we can. It's, a, it's there all around us. And so we hook into it. That's the, the brain working with us. And so I have all my life been competitive and a bad loser. Mm. And let me tell you, not only have I thought it, but I have been it. I have been competitive and I have been a bad loser to the point as a grown adult Mm-hmm. I went away for a weekend with some friends and as you know a group of friends away in this lovely cottage for the weekend they start playing games and I sat out of this particular evening of games because I know of course I know that I'm competitive and I'm a bad loser and I know that my behavior isn't good enough so I don't want my friends to see that so at like mid 30s <laughs> I did not take part in this game because my belief of me is that I'm competitive and I'm a bad loser yeah. and I don't want my friends to see that. Therefore, I'm better off not being a part of not, it. Not being part of it. And actually, I was so upset. I wasn't part of it. I was so cross with myself. Here I am, you know, all these years later going, Shelly, you you don't have to be a bad loser. You can stop. You can change that right. label. You can change that story. That is a belief you've built on all your life because someone... And you know, my dad would be horrified if he knew he'd had that effect on me. And it's not about him at all. That's the power of sometimes we can grab hold of something and we will run with it and we will build that and build it and build it and tell ourselves for the rest of time that that's the truth. Our limiting beliefs are simply a thought that we've made a truth. It's as yeah. simple as that. Yeah. And, and I, 
that, that's great and a great example and brought me to my next point because I was going to ask you what are some of the tips, two tips that you could give us to get over limiting beliefs and you just gave us one, change the story, change that's absolutely the narrative, how you speak to yourself, you know, sit and reflect about, you know, what is it that I've been telling myself, you know, about a thing, about myself, about others and change the script. Absolutely. The key to dealing with limiting beliefs, and it's not quite as simple as I'm about to make it sound. This isn't right. You know, I've just said I'm still finding these things all the time, but it's it's finding them. It's hearing yourself. It's hearing what you're saying to yourself. And it's hearing those statements that you might might not even say out loud. But, right. the, the, you know, the 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 labels you put upon yourself, the things you say you can't do, never be able to do your rubbish at. You know, if they're holding you back, it's a limiting belief. You know, some beliefs are good. Let's just be really clear. But if there is something that is stopping you doing what you really want to do, it's a limiting belief. And it's, it's that. So it's, it's identifying it. It's noticing it. Awareness is the first step of change. Mm -hmm. But then you've got to do something about it. And I have two further tips. And the third is exactly what you just said. Rewrite that story. But the mm -hmm. bit in the middle is actually really asking yourself if the belief is true. Mm -hmm. So that piece that says, actually, that thing you're telling yourself, how do you know that's yeah, true? Exactly. So that bad loser, is that actually true or have you made it true? Yeah. Because I've got loads of examples of where I've not been a bad loser, but I focused in on where I've been a bad loser. I say I can't do something. How do I know that's true? Have I even tried to do that thing? Exactly. So it's hear it, notice it, ask yourself if it's really true, and then change the story, change the script. And actually, what do you want the belief to be? Give that, give that a go. And it's, we can talk about affirmations. Essentially, you can, you can rewire your brain. You can retrain your brain to a new mm -hmm. way of thinking. But if you've been carrying a limiting belief for several years don't expect to wake up tomorrow morning and it's just gone right. that's what I mean about it takes time it's gonna take work absolutely if you've been telling yourself for 20 years you're a bad loser I'm using that example because it's so easy then it's going to take some time to change that story and tell yourself that you are actually able to play a game and you know not be frustrated if you don't win whatever the belief becomes exactly um, I mean yeah, those, were, those, those were some great tips um great conversation Shelly Shelly I know you know my audience it, they will benefit so tremendously from what we have discussed here today. But I'm going to ask you, how do we find you? How do we find you if we want to get in contact with you? So in terms of finding me on the social media platforms, I make it nice and easy. I'm on Instagram pretty much every day with some kind of metaphorical kick up the butt or a, you know, a share of some sort at Shelley Bosworth Coaching. Okay. I do, I do run a free Facebook group and I'll put my teeth in to say it the successful ladies escape lounge it's wow. exactly what it says on the tin it is absolutely for ambitious females who want a safe space to just think about themselves and learn this stuff and understand the power of their mindset so come and find me there too if you want to hear more of this um and yeah obviously my my website as well i am shelly bosworth coaching if you google that you will find me right okay wonderful uh what is one and i'll also put this in the description when we post um this podcast but what is just one one last tip one last lesson that you want to share with our audience so my biggest lesson tip quote whatever you want to call it is just try if i can anyone can so mm -hmm. my my quote um, that I used when I first left my corporate role and I still live by and sometimes my, my friends and things send it to me is she believed she could so she did yeah and, it, and it's as simple as that just just give it a go give it a try, give it a try. yeah yeah okay like, awesome sure. <laughs> awesome 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 thank you so much for being with us today Shelly um we tackled this imposter syndrome and limiting beliefs and I can tell you it was a very good and interesting conversation I know that Anybody who listens to this will actually have some key tips and takeaways. This has been great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Great. So we'll post all the information with the with this podcast. So you'll be able to contact Shelly at all her channels and all her um, contact information will be there. So thank you again. Good evening. Good night. Good morning, wherever you are listening from. Again, my name is Althea Walters from the Focus and Fulfilled podcast. And today my guest was Shelley Bosworth from Shelley Bosworth Coaching. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for listening and good night. <laughs>